Hi, this is Mobile Network Comparison, and today we're looking at how the Samsung Galaxy S3, quite old phone now, performs in modern 2014 up-to-date benchmarks. So we're running the latest version of Antutu benchmark, version 4.5.1, and we're just going to go ahead and start the test to see what happens. I'm starting the test here, and we're going to see what Antutu makes of this hardware. So to remind you, this used to be Samsung's flagship phone. It first originally came out in July 2012, so we're talking about two years ago. And so 24 months on, how does it perform? Well, let's have a quick run over of the specs. Of course, when it came out, this was one of the most powerful phones available. It comes with an Exynos 4 system on a chip which has this quad-core ARM Cortex-A9 CPU. And the graphics processing is also pretty powerful, also with an ARM chip. This time it's a Mali 400MP GPU. So according to Samsung, the quad-core version of the A9 inside this phone has doubled the performance of the S2 that preceded it, and also uses about 20% less power. Other additions to the hardware spec on the S3? Well, it finally supports 4G LTE for use in the UK, and it also has a massive 2 gigs of RAM. One of the first things you'll notice about the S3 is it's got an HD Super AMOLED display which is massive, 4.8 inches diagonal. This at the time was by far Samsung's biggest phone display if you ignore the Galaxy Note and the Galaxy Note 2. As well as having a big display, it also runs at pretty high resolution. So it's got a 720p display and its PPI is a big step up at about 306. Of course, those of you in the know will remember that this is a Pentel Matrix display, which has been quite controversial and pretty much shunned by lots of tech bloggers and phone reviewers in the past. However, we have to say that the display on the Samsung Galaxy S3 looks absolutely lush, and we've got no complaints about it whatsoever. The display is covered by a layer of Gorilla Glass 2, and what else can we say about the Samsung Galaxy S3? Well, it's got a nice 8 megapixel camera, it can shoot 1080p HD video, it's got pretty good shutter lag, it's got all these sort of Samsung gimmicky software devices such as the Smart Stay feature which tracks the user's eyes and prevents the screen from turning off when the user's looking at the screen. It's got a much bigger battery life with a claimed 790 hour standby time, don't think we'll see that in real life, and also a bigger battery, 2100 milliamp hours to keep that big screen powered. So we've now moved on to the graphics tests and you can see that the performance is pretty fast in the 2D tests. I mean this is a really powerful phone, even though it's two years old now the CPU and the GPU are blisteringly fast. That Mali graphics processor really handles these benchmarks with absolute ease and you can see the FPS shooting up here now. We've already hit 18 FPS on this demo testing 3D graphics and it's hovering around that sort of region now. We've just hit the 20 FPS mark and even though this hardware is so old it's actually kind of quite amazing how much power Samsung have managed to fit into such a small package. And there we are, we're finished. So, how does the S3 perform? Well, we're getting a score of about 19,000 plus. It really depends on the, on the time of day and the phase of the moon exactly what score you get. But if you have a look, yep, this GT i9300 gets 19,188. It's got great scores and multitasking. The RAM's really fast. CPU, GPU, blisteringly fast scores. And in general, it's getting exactly the sort of score you expect from a Samsung Galaxy S3. So thanks for watching, look out for the rest of our videos, and if you want to see more reviews, benchmarks, or anything else, please let us know in the comments below what handsets and what topics you would like us to look at next. Bye!